Hello and welcome to this Parallelis video tutorial. In this video we're going to go over how to set up and install the resort style starter kit which when we're done or when you first install it will look like this and we're going to edit some of these things. To get started we will first go to our WordPress admin and we need to activate the vellum theme. Once that's activated it's going to take us to the demo content starter kits page and we have a lot to choose from here but the one we want is this one right here the resort style say OK and that's importing the demo data activating the starter kit and success we have that done so we can take a quick look now at what it looks like after we've installed the demo content package so our starter kit will get us loaded up and looking about like what we expect here's our slideshow we've got these graphics down here we've got our menu and we're able to jump to the different sections where it scrolls by clicking the menu items. So to get the first thing we want to change done we will edit this logo right here and to do that we'll go back into the admin and we'll go to theme options. At this point we don't have any logos uploaded so we're going to select a file and I'm just going to drop a few things here. I'm going to drop in three images one of these images is a logo and the other two we're going to use when we edit the slideshow and the content area. So I'll select this logo, say select, I'm just going to save that page. And with that done we'll go back to our home page and refresh it to see there's our new logo. An important point to note here is that this logo we have built in a good bit of extra space on the top and the right and the left and the bottom. And the reason for that is this, this area here that we've got in the masthead with this transparent background, it's very easy for that to show through and it's intended, but you'll see these graphics behind it. And sometimes a graphic might interfere with that logo a little bit, making it harder to see. So we gave the maximum area available on this particular skin, this style, for making your logo extend all the way to the edge. So you could throw in a nice smooth glow or, or shadow or whatever you need to help make your logo really stand out. If you don't need those things, you can just build in transparent space on these edges and it'll look great. But if your logo is cropped really tight, you're probably gonna wanna edit it for this particular skin. And that's the reason why. It's to make things a little easier. So let's go to the next part of this. We're gonna change this slideshow. You'll see right here we have a navigation element to go from one slide to the next, but we only have one slide. So all it's doing is reloading the slide when I hit that. We can turn that off, but in, in the case of what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna add a second slide, which I think is a great use of this, and it'll demonstrate how to do some additional things. So heading back into the admin, we'll go over to the slider revolution. Now we're looking for the resort and spa, here it is. I'm going to click on that and we don't have to change many settings in here but one of the things we want to want to change is right here stop slider is turned on and it's to stop at slide one that's how we're getting the slideshow to not constantly loop and repeat showing the home the first slide again and again because it's only one slide so it might as well just end when it finishes with the first slide in this case we're not going to need that anymore we're going to turn it off because we actually want the slideshow to continue to show the second and the third and the fourth or however many slides we add another thing i'm going to show that's important is that navigation we had on the top right that was showing those arrows that was created with this if we didn't want that we would just turn it off by coming here and setting this to none and then we wouldn't have a next and previous arrow but we do still want that in the case of the one we're about to do so i'll keep that turned on i'm going to save these settings and now they're saved and nothing's really changed except that the first slide will loop now. To continue on, I want to look at the slides I already have. I'm clicking the Edit Slides button and that takes me to this page here where I can see all the slides I have on this slideshow, which currently is only one. So I'm going to edit this one first and then when I'm done, I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to put in a second slide. So I'll click here to edit the slide. and the first thing I want to do actually is I want this slide to show a little bit longer. It's set to a pretty short length for our demo because it only has to do one thing. It shows the slide and then loops through a couple of little layers at the bottom. But in the case of a second slide, we want there to be a bit more delay. So I'm just going to extend this to five seconds. So I type in 5,000 and then down here we can see our slide and we can see some of the layers we have on it. These are the quotes and then these are the different 
versions of the text that we're showing for desktop devices and mobile devices. And we'll show how that's done also. So to get started, I'm gonna change the background image. Right here, I've got image BG. I'm gonna click change image. And I'm gonna select this first image here, this golf image that I uploaded when I was uploading my logo. I'm gonna say insert. And there we have it, there's our new image. And let's go ahead and we don't need these quotes anymore. They're kind of in the way over this golf ball. So we'll get rid of those, there's three of them. And the way we get rid of them is they're layers and you can see them right here. And when I'm clicking on them, you can't tell because they're on top of each other. I'll turn off the transparency, I'll make them so you can see them. So when I click on this first one, it's putting a little highlight around it so I know I'm selecting it. And to get rid of it, all I have to do is click Delete Layer, this button right here. So I'm gonna delete that layer, and then I'm gonna do it for the next one. I'm gonna Delete Layer, and then I have these two turned off just now, so I'll turn them back on, click the next one, and I'm gonna do this for all four of them. Just get rid of those completely, I don't need them. And then for this text, we're gonna change it a little bit. We've got some styling down here that we're using to make this text look big and bold the way we want. It's just simple HTML styling. You don't have to use that, but we've got it in there and it looks nice. So we're gonna say, relax your life. Okay, there you go, relax your life. Just something different to show a change. The next thing that we were gonna show is, this is the one that shows when we're on a mobile device. This is the one that shows on a desktop. So how are we differentiating that? I'm gonna select this layer the one that shows on the desktop, and I'm gonna scroll down and look at the layer and links, the advanced parameters tab. When I go in there, I have a special class assigned that says hidden phone. There are a bunch of these classes, and we actually have a tutorial on our, our website that lists all of them, explains what they do and how they work. The ones that we use for responsiveness, they enable you to target devices like tablet, phone, and desktop. In this case, we're saying don't show this on the phone, show it on tablets and show it on desktop devices. So for the other one, we'll do the reverse of that. When I click on this other and I come down here to the same section, it says visible phone. So this will only show on the phone. And in the case of this particular slide, we wouldn't really want it because it's right on top of that golf ball. And in most cases, you're not gonna need a different way of displaying your content on a mobile device versus a desktop device. So it's entirely up to you if you wanna create these extra layers to do that. We don't need it for this, so I'm gonna delete it. Now I've got my slide laid out how I want it to look, and I've changed a few things. I've got my new background. I'm gonna go ahead and save this, update slide. And why don't we take a look at what that's done? Go back to my home screen, refresh my web page. And there we see, relax your life. It comes in, we've got our golf ball, our new image, still have our tabs, we can go between slides, but we still only have one. So let's add that second slide. I'm gonna go back into my admin and I wanna add a new slide. So I could click add slide, but I'm gonna save a little bit of time by just replicating all the settings I already have on this slide that I want to reuse. And to do that, I'm just gonna go back to the slide list, click this button right here. And now I can click duplicate, make an exact copy of the slide I already have. Right there, exactly what I wanted. So I'm gonna open this one up and edit the slide. And the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna change this background image to my other golf image that I already have. So here's that, I'm gonna select it, insert, Okay, now maybe we want some different text here. We could say, select that and enjoy your life. There you go. We're gonna update the slide to save it. And now we have two slides. We're gonna switch back to our home screen, refresh it. And there you go, we've got our first slide. It comes in, it says it's a little text there. And then the next one will come in five seconds later. Here it is. There's the second one. So you're going to want to tweak that and adjust it for your individual use. But this is how you get that home screen with the slideshow at the top modified to look the way you need it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to change some of these in-page elements. So to do that, we need to take a look at the individual pages. So back over to the admin section and we're going to click pages. And I'm going to be looking for the one page resort. I'm going to click that to open it. 
Now to start, I have all of these different sections. The very first one is that first section we're seeing with the About Us text. We can see that here. We're gonna start by changing the background image on that area, and then we'll open this up and edit it so we can see how it's being created and what it's doing. To edit that background image, over here on the right, we click the pencil icon. This is the Edit Row Options. Once that loads, we're just going to scroll down to where the background image is being set. We're gonna select a new one. I've already uploaded a couple of images. We've used them. This uh, golf image here is a great one, so we'll select it again. Now I can scroll down and I'm just gonna check a couple other settings. Yes, enable parallax effect is turned on. Scroll offset, that just controls how fast the background scrolling parallax effect occurs in relation to the scrolling by the user in the browser. The lowest setting is fine, it's the default and it looks very good, so we'll go ahead and save that. And I'm going to update my page and then I'm gonna check it out on the public website again. So switch back over and refresh. Right there, about us. Got our new background image, just like we wanted. So let's go back and change that text so we can see how it's happening. We're using a raw HTML element and that's not necessary, but in this case we did it because it's just a little bit easier to control things the way we wanna control them. The way I'm telling the menu where to go when you click that about link in the menu is this tag right here. I'm just throwing in a div tag. I'm giving it the ID about. It's a real simple thing to do. This is using the anchor tag effect uh, scrolling is built in, it's a default feature, it's been part of HTML since the beginning, and you can do this to scroll to in-page elements. We're just throwing in some extra scrolling effects to make it look a little bit nicer. So if you see here, I'm just saying a div ID about and then nothing inside. Then below it, I've got a H2, a heading element, and I've given it this special class called title bottom attached. That is what we're using to get this right here just to automatically go to the bottom of the container and look like it's attached. It's a nice little effect. All you have to do is put that class in and you've got it. So we're gonna change this to about vellum. I'm gonna save that, update it, and let's take a look at what that does. Page is gonna reload and right here, about vellum. So that's all it takes to do that. Next, we're gonna look at what we're doing to get these menu links to go to those areas. So I, I have the ID that tells it to go to this section, this about ID, but how does the menu know which one I'm targeting? So if we head back over to appearances, menus in the WordPress admin, and then once the menu loads, we're gonna take a look at this about element. I'm gonna expand it here and you can see I've got a hashtag and then about. You're just gonna type in hashtag and the exact text of the section you wanna to scroll to and that's all it's gonna do. Since it's probably helpful to see how we did that, I'm gonna show, we just, over here where we have the links element, it's a simple tool, we click expand the links section and we're gonna create a custom link. And I'm gonna do hashtag about, and I'm gonna give it the text about vellum. Now we could just as easily, add to menu, we could just as easily have edited the menu item we have, but this is just a way for us to show how we created that. And because I didn't want to edit this one, I wanted to demonstrate it and I don't need it now. I'll just remove it. I'm gonna save my menu. I'm gonna go back to the public website and I'm gonna reload it. And now you'll see your new menu item and it's changed to the new text. That's everything you'll need to do to set up a one page scrolling with the default menu, the way it's set up for, the, for you with the starter kit in the demo. The other thing you may want to do is have pages off of the main page. So if you're not gonna use a one page or if you're gonna use a mostly one page but have some additional pages off of it, there are some, some special things you have to do sometimes to those links to get them once they're off of the home page to come back to the main page and scroll down to those sections. So we're gonna show you now how to do that so that if you set it up as a multi-page site, it works just the way you want. So we're gonna go back to the admin and I'm gonna pretend that I have one page on there that links to another section of my website. So let's just pick a page out of here. We'll pick uh, the sample contact page. I'm gonna add that to the menu. So now we've got this link. It's gonna be in our menu and it's gonna take us to another section of the website. So let's see what happens when we enable that. Save it. Let's go back over to the home page. Reload it. All right, so if I click this now, it's gonna take me to another page 
on this website. So I've got this contact page, but the problem becomes what happens when I want to go back to the page that I was on? So these links no longer work because what they're doing is if you see at the bottom of the screen of this video, you can see it's putting that hashtag after the path to this page rather than putting it for the current page where these actually exist. So that's the problem. We can't seem to get back. Now we can click our logo and it'll take us back to the home page. But you don't want your user having to do that. That's that's a, a, a problem for a website to have that issue. So it's a real simple solution. All we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the admin and for each of these links that's on that same page, we're going to use a relative URL. We're just gonna put a slash before this one and I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go back to my website going to reload it and now if I go to the contact page and I click again on the welcome page it goes back to the home page to the section I, I chose so let's show it again for another section I'm go back here a relative URL this works if you're working from the root of your website and you don't have a sub directory it's just saying go from the domain slash and then whatever. So it's not gonna allow it to do that other thing anymore. The other way we could do this is we could type in HTTP colon slash slash screen And that's the same thing as putting in the relative URL. I've got my full domain of the page I'm working on right now all the way in there and then the slash. The shortcut for that is just a slash. I'll save this one, go back to the page. We're gonna to go to the contact us again. And now if I click the about vellum, it's gonna to go to the correct page, the home page where it's supposed to be and scrolls softly down to the section we want. So that's the trick. If you wanna create a vellum uh, website that's a one page, but then you have other pages off of it that are not part of that one page, this is how you get that one page menu to go to the correct spot. With that done, just one more thing you may want to do to get this to look just like the demo website is you might want to put your address or some other content down here at the bottom of the masthead. There are two sections, one right down here at the bottom and one right up here at the top above the logo. They're both widget ready and you can insert content into those. We're going to show you how to do that and we'll just add down here a simple address. So now I'm in the WordPress admin. I'm just going to come over here to widgets. And I am going to show these two right here. We've got the vertical masthead top because we're using a vertical style masthead and the vertical masthead bottom. We only need the bottom because we're not going to put anything at the top. I'm going to select the text widget, drag it in there. And let's say we live at or our business is at 123 Happy Street and that is located in Happy Land, Texas, how about? And we'll make up a zip code here, we'll do 7896456. Okay, that sounds good, I like that address. We'll save this. Now if I just toggle back over to our website and we refresh it, there we have 123 Happy Street, Happy Land, Texas. And that concludes the resort style setup. There's a lot of things you can do with this, so we hope you'll get creative and you'll do some pretty awesome stuff. We can't wait to see them, so please do share your finished website with us because that's one of the great things about making these themes is getting to see what other people do with them. So enjoy and have fun.